Another player to watch here on Game On. Galing po sa kakapanalo lang na San Beda Red Lions kanina. Let's welcome for the first time to the studio of champions. We got Alex Visser. Alex, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Okay, let's clarify that first because we've pronounced it in different ways this year. I pronounced it as Visser because, you know, that's how, uh, how the Filipinos will do it usually. But it, is it Visser, Visor, or Visser? Well, it's actually pronounced Visser, but I don't mind it. The Tagalog with the hard R, Visser, sounds pretty cool anyway. So. Ooh, okay, there's more emphasis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With the name, right? Okay, yeah. I'm gonna take note of that. Next time I cover you, I will say it in different ways. Okay, but Alex, we understand you grew, did grow up here in Manila. You grew up in Dumaguete City. In Dumaguete, yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, that is How correct. is it like growing up there? Uh, how was your childhood? My childhood was um, quiet. I would go to school, come mm -hmm. back. Um, in Dumaguete, there are a lot of people who are also half Filipino, so I grew up speaking English, strictly English only, and oh. Dutch from my father. So I had a hard time learning Bisaya when I moved to Cebu and Tagalog when I came here, but thankfully I adjusted fairly quickly, so yeah. Wow, so you've been around, you've been to yeah. Cebu, you've been to Dumaguete, and by the way, okay, Filipino-Dutch po si, si Alex, so your dad, you mentioned, yeah. is the one, is, is uh, may Dutch descent, pero yeah. si mom mo, is the Filipina. Yeah. Okay, so there are a lot of kids there. Did you, uh, uh, I don't know, acclimate with the community right away? And did you make friends a lot in Dumaguete and in Cebu? Yeah, it was, it was quite easy in Dumaguete because a lot of people are just like me. Uh, going to Cebu, I had to adjust because I couldn't really speak Bisaya so well, but that's where I learned Bisaya. Mm -hmm. And then coming to Manila, it was even harder because I had to speak Tagalog all of a sudden just while I was learning Bisaya, you know, so. Uh, thankfully, um, my teammates, most of them are Bisaya as well, so mm -hmm. they helped me adjust fairly easily into Tagalog. And now yeah. you're well adjusted. And oh, now, yeah, I can speak Bisaya sa San Beda. You know, kanina kinausap natin dalawa si Pacquiao, one of them as well. But Alex, when did you start playing basketball? And was basketball readily available for you back in the province? Um, my school always had a basketball team, but I actually was uh, varsity table tennis. Table tennis? Yes, table tennis. Okay. It, it didn't look good because I was 14. What age was this though? What age was this? I was 14 years old. I was varsity table tennis at six foot two. Man! So it didn't look good okay. at all, you know? Yeah, so someone told me, why don't you try out for the basketball team? You're tall, you got you got the good. So I tried it out and I liked it a lot. Easy, because no one was over six foot in my school. So it was pretty right. easy, yeah. So exactly. that's where I thought it. That was an easy choice for you. Yeah. Wait, so you just started playing basketball when you were 14 or 14. were you playing some basketball before that, like pickup games? No, I was a very yeah. late bloomer. That's the first time I played wow. basketball at 14 years old, yeah. You know what, that's a that's a great thing to emphasize because a lot of kids here in the Philippines, they start out really young. Yeah, exactly. They start out young. But mm -hmm. how is that like for you, you know, starting out late and then now playing competitive basketball in one of the biggest leagues, the NCAA? Yeah, it's great. Um, when I was in high school, I had to actually really step up my game. I remember my first practice, um, the coach had me sit out because I didn't know how to dribble. I didn't know what an in and out was, what a screen was. Yeah. So I had to sit out the practice and then it was a huge bummer for me. But I just made sure I, I worked twice as hard as anybody else whenever I could. And um, thankfully, I, I got to where I am today thanks to my school and the, all my coaches and their hard work and their help. Yeah. There you go. You've come a long way, Alex. And you are with one of the best programs in collegiate basketball in the Philippines and San Beda. Now, what was your reaction? Of course, you, you're a late bloomer in the sport. You grew up in, in Dumaguete. And how did it feel like, like going to Manila, getting recruited, and ending up with one of the best college teams in, in the country? How was the, the feeling? Or how was the experience for you? It was great. Um, you know, starting basketball at 14, I didn't expect that I would be where I am today. And Actually, San Beda was the first school that I tried out in. Ooh. And I had several offers okay. to try out in other schools, UAAP and NCA. But the second I tried out in San Beda, um, I never left, actually. That was, home. I had tryouts, tried, tryouts lined up, but I just never tried out in the other schools. I just committed straight away in San Beda. Wow. That's, that's the culture and the community it, it brought to me. So. so that's the instant connection Yeah, exactly. for Alex in San Beda. By the way, speaking of the community, you will meet some, of course, the members of the community on Friday in your big matchup against Ram because yes. we will be welcoming uh, the audience back in the NCAA. All right, now, for you, Alex, though, you play center, obviously, for San Beda. You're one of the key bigs of this particular team. Now, who is your idol? So again, let's, uh, let's go first to your 
Philippine basketball idol and NBA idol because obviously you you have your peg with how you want your game to be. So who's, who are those players for you? Well, in Philippine basketball, I really looked up to Mark Pingris. Mark Pingris. Yes. Okay, that's a good choice. Yeah. That's a good choice. Because um, looking at him, people always told me, oh, Mark Pingris is the epitome of hard work because he wasn't that talented offensive-wise, but he worked really, really hard to get where he was, and he's a legend for it. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things I took from watching him and watching him play. So yeah, he's, he's my idol for sure. Actually, same story. He wasn't highly recruited as well. But ending up with, you know, in the in the professional leagues and in the national team, made a mark with the national team. Yes. And now he is a household name in Philippine basketball. But sure. your idol in the NBA, because of course, you got idols out there, you know, in the in the best league in the world. Yeah, I would always watch um, Marc Gasol and Pau Gasol. I really like okay. watching them play. Um, Tim Duncan is also Mr. Fundamental, of wow. course. How can you forget? Uh -huh. um, nothing flashy. I think that's really my type of player. I just like watching people who work hard and aren't that flashy and just get the job done. These are good picks, by the way. Just fundamentals, yeah. one fundamentally sound player. You got Pingris, Tim Duncan, Mark Gasol, mm -hmm. and Pau? Yeah, both of them. The, the Gasol, Gasol brothers. brothers. Yeah. So, shall we expect that from you in the coming years? Because right now, you're, you're more of the designated uh, center, big guy who collects the rebounds and, you know, does his job defensive. But is this something you would like to add in your game in the future, offensively at least? Yeah, for sure, as I progress in the NCAA and with Sanbeda, I would like to add that to my arsenal. But right now, I'm happy where I am. We have a lot of offensive threats in our team. Yeah. Our bench is so deep, so I just want to do the little things, uh, do hard screens, roll hard, play defense, um, do whatever it takes for to fill in the gaps in our team. Yeah, but I want to know, Alex, especially with the two-year layoff that we had uh, during the pandemic, how? How did you spend first year pandemic and how did it feel like going back there on the court, especially in this year, in the NCAA season 97, now that we have resumed college basketball again? Yeah, the pandemic was crazy because I went home expecting, okay, I'm going to be home. I'll have a one month vacation uh -huh. and I'll be back playing basketball. <laughs> next thing you know, we're there for two years, exactly. right? Exactly. So I just spent my time swimming, honestly, because we live next to the beach. Swimming. Yes, I love swimming. I would, um, our beach, we have corals right in front of it. Mm -hmm. So I would swim with the turtles, uh, play basketball, pick up with all my friends, you know, just play basketball every day, swim. It was just full of activities and yeah, it helped me prepare to where I am today. And it's great to be back with the NCAA with um, everything. So yeah. yeah, especially with your conditioning. I mean, yeah. swimming is like one of the best sports activities that you can do, cross training activities that you can do, especially if you are a basketball player. But you're so lucky, you, you live near the beach or yeah. right beside it. Yeah, Dumaguete is right next to the beach as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, but luckily, our, our house is a, is a beach house. So wow. I'm really blessed for that. Yeah. All right, so a lot of people envy you because you got instant vacation every yeah. time you go home in Dumaguete. All right, Alex. Now, for San Beda, this is the first time I'm asking you about the season, by the way. You got San Beda right now. You are at 7 and 1. You have a big game on Friday against Letran. How are you? anticipating that matchup. Of course, it is a rivalry game. And it's also the first time we're gonna have fans on the stands. Your thoughts on that, on the, your game on Friday? Yeah, it's, it's really a great story because everything's coming together. The audience are coming back, rivalry game. Um, it's actually a make it or break it game for the final top two spots for right. us uh -huh. also. So it's a really must win for us and we're just gonna bring it. That's all I can say, we're gonna bring it and you can, I can guarantee that. There you go, that is a an Alex Visor, Visser, Visser, guarantee here. They are going to bring it on Friday. Our player to watch today, Alex Visser of the Sun Better Red Lines. Thank you so much. But again, we will not let you go without, of course, letting you greet your loved ones here on GTV. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, to my mom and my brother, hello. My mom in Dumaguete, my brother in Cebu. My girlfriend, hi, I miss you so much. My girlfriend's family, all my friends in Dumaguete, I miss you guys. Thanks for everything. Thank you for getting me to where I am today. No, can you greet them in Bisaya as well? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Sa tanan mga Bisaya nag support sa among team. Salamat kayo. Dagan mga Bisaya sa team raba. So, kailang jud mo mga support sa among dili sa oban team. There you go. Alex Vizer again, chebre. Alex, we have a lot of viewers from the region, different regions here in the country, including the Visayas and the Mindanao. So I'm sure nakarating yung mga greeting mo sa kanila. But thank you so much, Alex, for joining us here. Thank you for having me. It's great.